So welcome to another video with Inside the Academy and in this one we're building a fully customizable calendar component with Inside Flutterflow. There is no third party libraries required in this one. With a little bit of patience, with a little bit of low code, a little bit of AI use with ChatGPT, we can get this fully working component working fantastically for us. And of course you can then use this in your own projects and customize it to however you need to. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get back in. So the great thing about creating these type of components in your own application is that you've got full design license. So if you are looking for something a little bit more custom, but you're very familiar with Flutterflow, then this is a great little component where you can design this however you would like. Whereas if you use a third party component, of course, it may be that if you're looking for this type of functionality, that third party component doesn't give you the look and feel that you would need for your own application. So, and of course, if you are also learning components in Flutterflow, this is a great video to learn more about how to build components and how to give, make them a little bit more clever with using some low code as well. So you can see here the components on screen on the home page here. I can choose any particular day that I would like. The current day here remains kind of highlighted and you can see here that the previous days of the month are already shown but slightly grayed out and of course the, the next month days are of course shown as well. And as I sort of move through this particular component, all of the characteristics you would have from a typical calendar component are respected. And of course I can choose this particular date and because this is a, is a component, I'm calling back from the component back to the parent page there, the actual date that has been selected. And of course, I can hit the little reset button here, and of course, I'm back to the current date. So lots of little good little features in, in here which you can extend in your own projects. So let's now get into the meat of the video and let's start building this from scratch. Okay then, so if you want to follow along, please do check the link in the description because you can clone this kind of sample starter project and this is where we're going to build our components. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create that brand new component. So we're going to move over to the components on the left hand side, right click and say add component. Let's give our kind of our component a new name. So we can say create blank here and we're going to call this calendar component just like that. Hit create component and here we're in a blank page. So the first thing they're going to do is create a container now for our actual calendar. So let's hit the plus here, go to container and we're going to give our container some sizes. So the container's uh, width is going to be 320 and the height is going to be 340 like that. And um, we're okay to use our secondary background but we do certainly want to set some border radius here. We want to give it kind of those rounded edges. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the little uniform option here, which means that by us putting a value in here, it's going to be consistently made across all of the corners of our particular container. If I just click away here, you can just see those kind of rounded edges of our con component. If I just bring that out a little bit more like that you and click away, you can see that now. Right, move back over to the container. Oh, incidentally, by the way, I'm not going to spend too much time in this particular video and rename all of my widgets, but the final project contains all of the widgets, all nicely renamed there, um, just for your uh, for your reference. Okay, so next up, we're going to put our page column in there. Everything that's going to be with inside this particular container is all going to be kind of vertically stacked. Okay, that's going to be kind of the main one. So just press container here. Now on the right hand side here, we can see that we're going to want to probably put a little bit of spacing in as well. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to kind of like start the spacing at 16 kind of pixels from the top. So anything, any child widget that we put in there is going to start 16 from the top. But all of our kind of our kind of alignments will remain sort of from the top there and nicely centered as well. So let's now continue just putting in our kind of more, more structural side widgets. And then what we'll do, we'll then sort of start drilling down into each and every one of those particular sections. So the first one that we're going to add in here is now a row. Now this row is going to kind of contain the kind of the month and the year. And of course the reset button on the right hand side as well. So now that we've got a row there, um, what we're going to do is we're now going to put then another row in here. And this row is going to be more specifically then for the actual date, um, the, the kind of the calendar month and the year. Okay. So with that now set, let's go back up to the top row here and we're just going to put then in a icon. So we're just going to go here and in fact we're going to probably going to put um, an actual icon a button in here. So choose the icon button here and we've got that now nicely shown there. Now of course the look and feel of this icon button is going to look pretty nasty but we've got to our theme style widget here in this particular project. I've kind of got just like a, a some styling that I've kind of preset in here which is going to be the uh, the icon button primary. So just choose that and you'll find that that's now changed for us here. But of course now what we need to do is we now need to kind of set some properties of this particular button. So let's now do that. So we're going to go down to our button size here. I'm going to choose a 34. We're just going to reduce the size of that. And then our border radius 
Um, so this is the kind of the area around that. We're just going to reduce that um, to 26. We do want to set the um, the actual uh, the icon itself. We're going to change it to kind of a bit more of like a uh, kind of like a more of a reset, like a, a little um, a little like a little circle there to kind of reset with an arrow. So what I do know is there is one that um, we can just type in restart here. Um, that's probably something that we would need. But feel free to kind of uh, choose whatever you would like on there. So I'll just choose. Maybe let's choose this one here. The restart all sharp. There we go. Now, what we can do with this particular kind of row here, if we just select this, of course, we can now kind of just choose the expansion. So by choosing the expansion, of course, we're just going to push everything over here now to the right hand side. Um, and what we now need to do is on the actual row itself, anything that kind of goes in, we're going to put a bit of padding here on the left and the right to kind of bring those particular child widgets a little bit into the into the from the sides, actually. So with the row selected. We're going to move over to the the actual kind of the start space. We're going to put 24 in here and we're going to put 24 on the end space in. So instead of actually using padding up here on the left hand side, I've kind of used the, the spacing um, that I'm actually applying at the start of that particular row and the end of that particular row to bring all of the child uh, widgets a little bit in from the sides. OK, so that's what I've done here. But you could have equally have used padding if that's something you wanted to do. But I highly recommend that if you try to use spacing more with inside your actual columns and your rows, it just makes things just a little bit more consistent. System. Now, in some elements of this particular widget, we do we do need to use padding because we're not going to have this kind of uniform spacing. Certainly, the item spacing with inside this particular uh, this particular sort of example. Okay, so now with inside the row itself, let's just put a couple of kind of text widgets in here. It's just going to put the first one in here and then just put the second one in here. Now, the first one, this one's going to represent the kind of the, the actual uh, sort of calendar month. And then this is going to be the actual year. We're going to bind those a little bit later to then the actual date that's kind of, kind of going to be passed into this particular component. But firstly, what we'll do, we'll just do some styling here. OK, so on the right hand side, let's set some style properties here. So let's just uh, sort of change the, the kind of the body medium here. I'm going to change this then to the label large like that. Now, the font size is going to be just increased to 16, just going to make that a little bit larger. Um, primary text is OK. Everything else is looking OK. We can come back and we can kind of like uh, change and adjust that a little bit shortly. Uh, now, of course, with our then our year, which is what this is going to be, we can then make a further adjustment here. We're going to keep it as body medium. We're just going to then increase the font size here. And we're just going to then make this now semi bold like that. So it's a little bit more bolder. And then we're just going to now go back to our row here. And we're just going to put some of this item spacing here. We're just going to put four here. So it just gives us that little bit of distance between the child widgets that's inside this particular row like that. <laughs> Okay, so next up, let's focus on creating the row now that contains our days of the week. And we're going to create a brand new component for that because it gives us an opportunity to promote a little bit more reusability in our application. So I'm just going to do Apple K here um, or Control K if you're on Windows here to create a brand new component. And I'm using the command palette. I'm going to choose this option here for add component. And of course, it's just a shortcut for me to get into this option, say create component. And I'm just going to call this one a day label component, just like that. Hit create component. And I'm going to create a container, hit the plus. So that's container is going to be our wrapper. And that's not really going to do a lot other than just kind of just sort of size everything up for us. So it's going to be 24 by 24 in width and height. Go to the fill color, choose secretary background. We're going to kind of remove any kind of fill color because we're not really interested in that. Hit clear color. So it's going to be nice and transparent. Um, and that's all that we need to do. I'm just going to move down here though. And I'm going to say well, any widget that goes in it, I'm going to leave the position to be central to the actual uh, container itself. So just hit, hit, hit the middle option here for child alignment. So that's set. I can go here, press the plus. Let's add the text in here and move over to the right hand side. Let's have a look here and let's drop this down to a font size of 11. So just make it a little bit smaller. Now the font weight, I'm going to make a little bit more sort of bolder here by doing 500 and then the text color, just select that. And I'm going to choose the secondary text. So it's slightly grayed out. If I now just hit away here, you can just see that you can kind of just see it just in the middle there. Um, I'll just hit a little plus there. You can see that it doesn't really sort of show you much at the moment. Right now, what we need to do is we now need to create a component parameter. This component parameter is now going to accept a string. So let's 
choose choose a day label component, go over to the right hand side and say component parameters, hit the plus here, add a parameter in. Now with the parameter name is just gonna be day. Now the type is just gonna be a string. We're just gonna pass in a string label here and it's gonna be required every time we use it, which is fine. Hit confirm and that's now all set for us. Now what we can do, we can go now to the text. We can move over to where the little text selector here is. We can bind that particular text widget to the value that's gonna come in for our parameter. So just choose day there, hit confirm. Oh, I just need to put a space in here for a default value. It needs to have a default value. Hit confirm and that's now all set for us. So pretty well much, I think we may need to do a little bit of adjustment, but that that's good for now and we can now get ready to now use that back on our page. I'm just going to tidy up here, just going to move the day label into the components folder here so it's then in line and it's all in our nice sort of group together by components. Okay, so that's not a requirement but that's just a, a personal thing that I have for keeping all my components together. So now we've got that, let's move back to the home page. Now what we need to do, sorry, go back to the calendar component, I beg your pardon, and we need to now just collapse down our row here and with our column we're just going to hit the plus, we're going to add a brand new row in. In. And then what we're now going to do is now going to add in uh, kind of five, sorry, seven instances now of that particular component. So just hit the plus. Now I'm going to go and click, choose the little diamond here, and you can see here now we've got the day label com component. So just choose that, and we've got that in there. Now we can move down here to the right hand side, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose this one to be Monday. So just put M O N in there to represent Monday. And what I'm going to now do is now I'm going to duplicate these, and I'm going to create seven of those, these. So I'm just going to right click and just say duplicate like that just going to keep doing that so there's all my seven so i'm just going to quickly go through now i'm just going to set all of these up now and say tuesday and i'm going to do that right the way through all of the days okay so now move back over to the row now let's kind of space all of these out evenly so just select the main axis alignment just choose this one here with space at between now that's going to give everything all nicely evenly spaced out but of course we now want to bring these in from the side but on this occasion what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose the padding option here 24 and I'm gonna choose 24 here on the right. That brings it nicely in like that. Um, that is pretty much what we need to do. I'm just gonna put a little bit of padding here. We're gonna kind of make sure that we push whatever's below it, which is gonna be the kind of the main kind of calendar. We're gonna just push down a little bit. So just put 10 in there to bring that a little bit lower. So that's good. We might wanna come back and do a little bit of tweaking with this, but um, pretty well much that's that now created. We can now move on now and start creating the, the next widget for the actual grid itself of the, the days. Oh,